In this video we look at section 3.6 where we try to completely characterize all the solutions <clears throat> all the solutions to the mass spring system based on <clears throat> just what the known values of MB and K are. Okay. Now we know MB and K uh, in our class we're trying to use the variables delta and omega instead but just to, to set the stage for the delta and omega form let's recall what they do in the book. Okay. In the book they're looking at the mass spring damper system okay, which uh, they guess solutions Y is equal to e to the ST or the position they'll find the characteristic equation to be as such and therefore s comes out to be these values now we know that s was also the same as our eigenvalues so we have the eigenvalues of um, the matrix of 0 1 negative k over m negative b over m the eigenvalues of that matrix or the solutions to the characteristic equation come out to be this. Now it's a rather complicated expression to analyze here, but we hopefully looked at enough of these problems to realize that uh, in the last um, several sections of chapter three, that the solutions to the any differential equation are gonna break down based on whether or not your eigenvalues are real or complex, okay? The eigenvalues are real or complex based on the solutions to the characteristic equation, which is this. So the book takes the tact of going through and looking at the um, possibilities for understanding the real and complexity, the, or the real or the imaginary, um, the real or imaginary possibilities for the eigenvalues based on various values of M, B, and K. And so notice that in the discussion down here, b squared minus 4mk shows up as a very important part because if b squared minus 4mk 4 M, 4 is less than 0, then you know your eigenvalues are going to be complex. In which case, if your eigenvalues are complex, you know you have the possibility to have oscillatory solutions in the time plane, or you may also have some oscillations with damping. Okay, so these are the two possibilities. Okay, um, and the two possibilities occur based on the value of B. If B is positive, if B is positive, then you'll have a eigenvalue with a real part whose real part is negative which means you're gonna have some damping in it okay okay if B comes out to be zero then you have an eigenvalue that is purely imaginary and you will have just your oscillations that don't damp out okay so these are the kind of uh, the kind of analysis that the textbook takes on I think it's um, perhaps a better approach to consider the differential equation y double dot plus 2 delta y dot plus omega squared y equals 0. The nice thing about um, this differential equation with the parameters delta and omega is that a comes out to be 0, 1 minus omega squared minus 2 delta. And if you look at the eigenvalues in this case, they will come out to be negative delta plus or minus the square root of delta squared minus omega squared. So here's the delta squared and omega squared showing up. Okay, And again, it breaks down into categories. If delta squared is less than omega squared, then delta squared minus omega squared is going to be less than zero, and you're going to have complex eigenvalues for lambda. Those complex eigenvalues will be negative delta plus or minus the square root of omega squared minus delta squared times i. Okay, 
So then you know your solutions in the case where delta squared is less than omega squared. The solutions for y are going to be e to the negative delta t, some constant cosine, and the frequency is going to be omega squared minus delta squared times t plus c2 sine square root of omega squared minus delta squared times t. Okay, so and then if delta squared is greater than omega squared, then your eigenvalues are real, okay? And the eigenvalues are gonna be negative delta plus or minus the square root of delta squared minus omega squared, okay? And then you can write down your solutions as e to the lambda one t, some constant plus some other constant e to the lambda two t and you'd have to apply initial conditions to find C1 and C2, right? So the, the characteristic equation and the solutions for your eigenvalues are dras drastically simplified if you use the delta and omega form. And so what we're seeing on the next page is um, what I will call a free gift from the math department. And these are also the notes that are in the Google Drive for section 3.6. It's called the Mass Spring Damper Summary. So you can see the, um, the cases that we've just done. If delta squared is less than omega squared, this is what your solution is going to look like. And it's going to have damping in it. So this is the case that your oscillation, you're going to oscillate but also damp out, which is called the underdamped case. Or we would know that as having a spiral sink in the phase plane. Okay. So let's go through uh, and look at an example of that, um, of this case. If you set the mass equal to 1 in the differential equations demo mass spring damper explorer, if you put mass is equal to 1, damping is equal to 1, and spring constant is k is equal to 4, and choose an initial condition to say to be 30 in this case, you can see that the m, b, and k values lead to omega squared and delta squared is uh, 4 and delta squared is 1 fourth. So that definitely falls into the category of um, delta squared is less than omega squared because delta squared came out to be 1 fourth. 1 fourth is less than 4. Okay, so we're definitely in the case of delta squared less than omega squared, and therefore our solution should come out to be e to the negative delta, and then the sines and cosines combination with some amplitudes of each cosine and sine term to be C1 and C2. So if you combine those sines and cosine terms together, you will get a plot, okay, for the time plots, and you can see here that there is going to be some oscillations, but there's also damping. If you plot this for more time, this is the underdamped case. Right? The oscillations just keep oscillating, and they're eventually going to approach y is equal to zero, and so too will the velocity approach zero. And here you can see that in the phase plane, we're seeing the spiral sink occurring, which is what I was saying that the underdamped case is the same as the spiral sink case. Okay, and that's just the case where delta squared is less than omega squared. Okay, if you jump up to let's say b is equal to four, okay, let's see what happens. Okay, here's an interesting case that we will probably not spend too much time on, but notice that delta squared is equal to omega squared. Okay. If delta squared is equal to omega squared, that is one of the cases on our sheet right here. This is the case where you're going to have repeated eigenvalues, and this is a case that for time reasons we're going to skip, but you can um, use the solution for the position as given on the chart here. Okay, if you go a little bit more, uh, let's take a look at the time plots here. 
This is when the delta squared is equal to omega squared, just since we're here, we will take a look. Um, this is the case of what is called the over, un, over damped motion, or I'm sorry, critically damped motion. But you can see here that the position y starts out at 30 and plot as it goes more and more in time, y is going to be approaching zero. But it's never going to cross over to zero. The solution is just going to approach zero very nicely. And there's no spiral sink or anything happening here. It's just kind of acting like uh, zero is acting like a sink, not a spiral sink. Okay, so that's the critically damped case where delta squared is equal to omega squared. And here are the solutions that you will find and those correspond with the chart that was in the, the free gift from the math department. Okay, if you bump up the damping a bit more, let's damp it up to say eight for example. Okay, we'll let the computers do all the computations here. Okay, let's see what happens. Delta squared is larger than omega squared. Okay. In that case, delta squared greater than omega squared, we had real eigenvalues. So your solution is going to be of the form some constant times e to that first eigenvalue plus some constant times e to the second eigenvalue. Okay. And therefore, you can plug in to your solution. Here is e to the first eigenvalue plus e to the second eigenvalue and you've solved for the appropriate constants k1 and k2. That This is too detailed an example to do by hand. The point here is to just show what the plots are going to look like. And it's um, when delta squared is greater than omega squared this is the case where you have what's called over damping and you are having the case where the, the Mass on a spring is starting at a position of 30, and as time increases, increases, y is getting closer and closer to zero, which we can see over there in the phase plane. And our solution is getting closer and closer to the equilibrium zero, zero. And there's no oscillations that are occurring. We're just sinking into that zero, zero position without spiraling around it. We're not spiraling because we didn't have complex eigenvalues in the case delta squared greater than omega squared. Okay, so there is the solution in this case. Pretty complicated one to do through by hand, but the point is, is that there are no, notice the lack of sines and cosines in the solution, which means that there are going to be no oscillations, which is why we're not seeing any oscillations in the time plots. Okay. So there is, are the notes for that completely characterize the solutions for the mass spring damper system based completely on the knowledge of what delta and omega are. There are three cases which occur. The first two cases are the ones that we're going to pay most particular attention to. The, the complex eigenvalues, uh, delta squared less than omega squared, and the real eigenvalues when delta squared is greater than omega squared.